Hello and welcome to the Imaging Wire show. My name is Brian Casey. I'm managing editor of the Imaging Wire. We've got a great episode for you today. Our topic is AI for early breast cancer detection. And our guest is Dr. Hannah Milch. She is a breast radiologist with UCLA Health Radiology. Dr. Milch, thanks for being with us today. Can you tell us a little bit about yourself and your research interests? You know, my main name is Hannah Milch and I'm a breast radiologist. And my research is focused on um, artificial intelligence and its uh, potential impact on breast cancer screening. All right, it's a very important topic these days. Um, so let's uh, let's jump right in. So let's talk kind of broadly about breast screening right now and where things stand in the U.S. So the U.S. PSTF is now supporting screening uh, for women starting at age forty. So that's good news, right? It is. It is. As a breast radiologist, I believe in, in breast cancer screening with mammography first and foremost, and then there are other screening modalities uh, given your various risk factors. And um, the earlier you start, the more lives you save from breast cancer. So absolutely, it's good news. So Dr. Milch, can you talk a little bit about the impact that mammography has had on breast cancer incidents and death rates since screening programs began? I mean, it's been pretty significant, hasn't it? Absolutely. Breast cancer screening with mammography has saved lives from, from breast cancer. You know, studies have shown anywhere from a 20 to 40 percent mortality uh, reduction with breast cancer screening with screening mammography. And in addition to saving lives from breast cancer, it also really decreases the morbidity, which is the pain and suffering women go through when they're getting treated for breast cancer. So how important is it to start treatment early? What what do you see with your patients? That's a great question. So if we detect a breast cancer early, a couple of things. It's more likely to be smaller, and it's less likely to have spread to other parts of your body, whether it be the lymph nodes or elsewhere in the body. Those two factors really, really improve your uh, survival rates and just your outcome and just the discomfort and pain of going through the treatment itself because you're treating a smaller area so you have less invasive treatment. For example, instead of a surgeon removing the entire breast, the surgeon may just remove a tiny part right where the cancer is. And similar the treatment is overall less invasive. So not only are, is there improved survival, but the process of getting treated is much um, less difficult for women when it's caught earlier. So Dr. Milch, uh, mammography has this life-saving benefit, but it's not easy to do. Can you talk about some of the challenges that breast radiologists face when they're reading screening mammograms? Absolutely. So as women know out there who have gotten a screening mammogram, it's basically an x-ray of your breasts, of each of your breasts. And the radiologist is basically looking at shades of gray on a picture. And usually a breast cancer will show up as you know white on that picture. But sometimes it can be looking for a needle in a haystack, and especially women who have dense breasts, it can be extremely challenging to detect small, small cancers. So while it's an excellent test, um, it is not perfect, and there can be some variability in our ability to detect, um, detect cancers on those exams. What we're going to be talking about today is this, this um, concept of interval cancers. And can you explain what interval cancers are and why there's such a problem in breast screening? Yes. So an interval breast cancer is a breast cancer that is detected after a negative screening mammogram. So let's say you go in and get your mammogram beginning of the year. It's negative. You're so relieved. And then a few months later, you feel a lump in your breast and you go to the doctor and you get it, you get, get it looked at again, and it turns out there is a breast cancer there. So that breast cancer was not detected at the time of your screening mammogram. So it's called an interval breast cancer. Mm. An effective screening program has as few interval breast cancers as possible. So it's a, a marker of a strong screening program when we try to get those interval cancers as low as possible because we want to be detecting them at the time of screening, not when you start to have symptoms. Would you call these missed cancers or are they something different? Um, that's a, a, a great question. Sometimes it was potentially there and either missed or very subtle and perhaps below the level of detection um, by the human eye. And sometimes there are certain types of very aggressive 
cancers that just start growing after a negative. So it's a combination which actually gets to the heart of of the paper we're discussing today that uh, it's a heterogeneous mixed group. Some may have been missed and some uh, are new. And so it's it's variable. Okay, well, let's let's jump into that paper. So you and, and your co-researchers researchers decided to investigate the use of AI to detect these interval cancers that are happening between screening rounds. Can you talk about why you thought AI might be useful to do this? Uh, sure. In the United States, we have a single reader system, which means that when you go and get a mammogram, a radiologist interprets and issues a report and gives their interpretation. So there are several commercial artificial intelligence programs that have shown a lot of promise in uh, detecting breast cancers on mammograms. So we felt that perhaps in addition to the human radiologist, an additional support tool may help further identify cancers on the mammogram that were either extremely subtle and missed by the radiologist or um, below the, their level of detection. So we felt this, if, if, if AI could potentially help in those circumstances and detect more interval cancers, that would be an exciting finding for the, the potential to improve screening effectiveness. Okay. And so this was published this spring in a journal of the National Cancer Institute. And can you tell us a little bit about how that study was set up? Sure. So the way that study worked is that we had a, a large cohort of women um, who were screened at um, our institution. And it was actually over 180,000 women. And of those women, we uh, identified 148 interval breast cancers. So it's a relatively rare occurrence, but it does occur. So we had a, a large group of interval breast cancers. We then looked at each of those individually. We re-looked at each of those and we classified them based on whether it was seen on the prior screening mammogram by, the, by when we looked back in time. And we then applied an AI tool to all of those interval breast cancers. And we saw how did the AI tool do on those, on those, um, on those interval breast cancers, on, those, on the prior screening mammogram. And uh, what we found was that when we classified the interval breast cancers, the ones that were quote unquote missed by their missed at the time of screening, those were the ones where AI did the best. So it was finding the cancers that were maybe subtle, but there, but something was there on the prior screening mammogram that the AI tool was able to pick up. And the AI tool was not perfect, but looking at extrapolating from what the AI tool was able to detect, we could potentially see a reduction in interval breast cancers by approximately 30%. Mm, wow, that's significant. So in, in, this, in, in a clinical use scenario, an AI kind of working over a radiologist's shoulder could catch 30% of these, you know, quote unquote, missed cancers over, exactly. which is huge. Uh, and can I ask what AI algorithm you use? Uh, sure. It's called Transpara by ScreenPoint Medical. Okay. And were you, were you surprised at the study's findings? We were not completely surprised. You know, there is evidence um, in, the, in the retrospective studies that, that allowed the algorithm to receive FDA clearance that it had potential to detect some interval cancers. We were encouraged because we applied it to a more, you know, a different type of population where where we are that's not necessarily the same populations it was studied in. Um, so that was encouraging. I think the surprising finding was that the AI tool also was able to detect some of the interval breast cancers that we classified as occult. So what that means is when we looked back at all of these before applying the AI tool, some of them we were like, okay, that was probably there before. And some may have been there, but was not present on the mammogram. Even when we looked back, we could not even multiple uh, eight, you know, expert radiologists look back and could not see it on the primary. But the AI tool still identified a few of those, which was very surprising. So what, so that begs the question, what is it seeing that's, you know, above the detection of the human eye? So, so that was surprising to see that more than what would have been expected, it was also detecting not as many, but an, uh, uh, a number of the occult uh, breast cancers as well. 
and your team developed a, a classification system to classify the types of interval cancers that the AI was was recognizing? Yeah, so we adopted this classification system from European models. There is some literature classifying interval breast cancers in Europe, but not as much in the United States. So we adopted our classification scheme from Europe. You know, we screen a little bit differently here in the U.S., and we divided them into different categories based on essentially the level of visibility at the time of the original screening mammogram. And do you think that the classification system like this could be used on a broader scale if AI gets adopted more widely in breast screening programs? Perhaps the classification scheme is really beneficial to under to better understand our interval breast cancers. So it's not a one size fits all. Some of them were present on the prior screening mammogram and for a number of reasons potentially not detected. And some of them are, you know, brand new aggressive tumors that just grew really fast. So by understanding that difference, it, it's, a, it's a really great way to, uh, to understand the effectiveness of your screening program. Because what we want to be detecting, we can't screen somebody every month. So the, the brand new fast growing ones are unlikely to be caught with screening. But we do want to catch the ones that may have been present, but very hard to see. So by classifying them, it does allow us to better understand where the AI tool is helping us. So it may be expanded upon when people are looking at the effectiveness of their screening program, but it's too cumbersome to classify every interval breast cancer across the board. Yeah. So, and, so what do you think the lessons of your study are for clinical practice? The lessons that I took from this study was that, yes, the AI tool can help us potentially decrease our interval breast cancers. However, um, this was a retrospective study. So a really important takeaway is that more study is needed. I don't want people to read this paper and think, okay, I need to get a mammogram with AI. It clearly makes things better. Because I will tell you that the verdict is still out on that. Um, the reason I say that is because when you apply an AI tool to mammograms in an experimental setting, which is what we did here and which is what has been done, it is quite different than when you're prospectively in real time interpreting a screening mammogram and using the AI tool. Yeah. So what I mean by that is if I look at a screening mammogram and I have the AI tool support, you do not know how the human radiologist is going to interact with the AI tool. When are they going to listen to it? When are they going to not? Because sometimes the AI tool is wrong. So when we just look at when it's right and that it's detecting these interval cancer, it can be a little deceptive because that's not a real world prospective study that shows when the radiologists listen. For example, if the AI tool is flagging something and there's nothing there, the radiologist may or may not call that back. We cannot call back everything the AI tool flags or it would be an astronomical number of women being called back who do not have breast cancer. So that's a great point. So what are you planning to do next with your research? We are in the process of looking at this in a real world prospective way. I can't, I, that is our goal. Uh, uh, that is our goal um, in terms of our future research plans to evaluate these tools prospectively in real world clinical settings and really understand the human AI interaction. Because if we're talking about using AI as a support tool, it's not enough to see retrospectively back in time how the AI tool did. You have to see how the human uses it and whether they use it to the best of its ability. And that means listening to it when it's right and knowing to disregard it when it's wrong. And we just do not know without further study how that will play out. That's a great point. I think that studies like what, that, like what, you and your research or your, your co-research have done, they're really going to move us along uh, toward, toward that future. But it's very exciting, the results like what you've, uh, you, you've seen and what, others, uh, what other groups are seeing you know, are really encouraging for use it, leveraging AI to detect breast cancer earlier and get women started on treatment like you mentioned earlier. Absolutely. All right, great. Dr. Hannah Milch, thanks so much for being with us today. Thank you for having me. Signing off for the Imaging Wire, my name is Brian Casey.